Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. As most of you know, Reverend Debbie is not going to be with us today. She tested positive for COVID this week. So she's doing, uh, is taking care of us by staying away for Sunday. Um, because of that, our service is going to look just a bit different. It's something that, uh, that we learned. We call it anti-communion. It's the first part of the service. It's like our normal service, but we will not have communion this morning. Service basically ends at five to eight. So we'll have no drinks or no alcohol for the evening. We will begin our worship with him.
sentiments, faith and love. That through your grace, we may proclaim your truth and boldness, and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel I will plant it, in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit, and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of, it, of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees in the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. We are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body than at home with the Lord. So whatever we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died, and he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone 
is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Someplace where 
the sun will hit it from far to day, and where you would remember to look at it daily. I hope you would watch as the seed transformed into both fruit and stalk, and when it got big enough, that you would either plant it at home or bring it to Debbie Hannah to add it to the <laughs> butterfly garden, or to another spot on our church property, or give it, some, give it to someone to plant in their garden. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, but I bet you can try this at home with any seed. I would put this question on each bag. What is God growing in you? It's an important question. Each of us has different abilities, gifts, and talents. Like Jesus tells us today, the tiny mustard seed can grow into a mighty bush that can support and protect birds and their nests. So I ask you, what is it that God is growing in you? And for what purpose? I hope you know that the seed is love. And its purpose is to be shared. Because we are children of God, because we are followers of Jesus, we are filled with these seeds of holy and life-giving love. When we remember that, it is so much easier to scatter the seeds of God's love everywhere we go. Some of you may know a song that goes, Love is nothing till you give it away. Reverend Betty Stump, the musician, knew this one. It is so simple and so true, the beauty of scattering these seeds of love to give it away, give it away, is that we cannot run out of God's love. Nope. When we give it away, the only result is that we end up having more. Even if we frivolously scatter our seeds, we will continue to have this love. What's even better is that because we've shared, Others will share. God's love will never disappear. It will continue to flourish in this world. How do we share? Well, that's in today's college. Through your grace, we may proclaim your truth with boldness, administer your justice with compassion. We proclaim to those we meet with our lips and in our lives, in words and actions, that God is love and that every single person is worthy of that love. We look with compassion and find ways to support those who are on society's margins and those whose lives are closely linked with ours. And sometimes those are the same people. Today, especially, as you bring your donations for the Oldham County Red Cross Food Pantry to the altar, and throughout each week, as you give of yourselves in the ministries you have chosen, you make a difference in the lives of those you meet. Not because you feel obligated, but because you are scattering the seeds of love that have taken root in you. Because you know that God's love is worth giving away. So back to those bags of dirt with a single seed and the question to consider. What has God planted in you? Are you willing to give this experiment a try? Can you use it to pay attention to the love God has planted in you? And if the seed sprouts roots and a plant, Will you tell me about what it meant for you to watch the process? Will you literally or figuratively plant the seedling for others to experience? Because you are a gift filled with the amazing love of God, called to scatter the seeds of love abundantly and 
connection with a family. I hope to see you next week. May the love of God go with you and may you scatter it today and always. I'm feeling your love. prayers of the people. Gracious God, open our ears to hear your word. Open our hearts to receive it and transform us. Make your church the fertile ground in which you love, your love can grow. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Terry, our bishop, Debbie and Mary, our clergy. In the Anglican community, we pray for the Anglican Church of Chile. In the diocese, cycle of prayer, we pray for the Episcopal Church Home and Retirement Services. In the parish cycle of prayer, we pray for those participating in Episcopal 101. O God of wondrous power and still more wondrous love, renew and revive your Episcopal Church, especially as we gather this summer for worship, discernment, fellowship, and action in Louisville. Send your spirit to us us to set us ablaze, so that the world might come to see and know us as the Episcopal branch of the Jesus movement. Proclaimers of good news, repairers of the breach, and stewards of creation who truly look, live, and love like Jesus, who welcomes us all to share in his communion with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in eternal communion, yesterday, today, tomorrow, love, always. In your mercy. Give leaders everywhere a heart for their people and a commitment to the common good. Cultivate in each of us seeds of peace and justice. In your mercy. We pray for healing for those who suffer from any ailment or isolation or want. We pray today especially for Adrian, A Alden, Amy, Audrey, Bob, Charlie, Chaz, Connie, Darwin, Dolores, Dorothy, Dolores, Harriet, Joseph, Jimmy, John, Lindsay, Liz, Marcus, Nancy, Oliata, Ryan, Tim, Tom, Presiding Bishop Michael Curry and Bishop Terry White. 
and for those who have received our healing blankets, and for those we may either silently or aloud. We pray for a peaceful end for those who will die today, and comfort for those who mourn. Those for whom we pray today, either silently or aloud. So in all of us, seeds with compassion. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen your image in our lives that we may reflect your goodness, your righteousness, your kingdom, and all that we say and do. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord our God, creator of heaven and earth, through your Son Jesus Christ, you have revealed yourself as a heavenly Father to all your children. Bless, we pray, all earthly fathers. Strengthen them to nurture, protect, and guide the children entrusted to their care. Instill within them the virtues of love and patience. May they be slow to anger and quick to forgive. And through the ministrations of your Holy Spirit, may all fathers be strong and steadfast examples of faithfulness, responsibility, and loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. You can bring your offerings of food following the offertory plate.
things come of me, O oh Lord. Follow along on the blue sheet, the uh, Red Cross food donation. Love our souls, we give thanks to you for giving us food to sustain our lives and to make our hearts glad. Yet our thankfulness, we remember that there are those among us who are hungry. Keep us ever mindful of the needs of others. Bless this food that it may bring nourishment and hope to those who receive it. Always with you. Good morning. First of all, happy Father's Day. Um, we're we're lower in numbers today. So I think some fathers were taking advantage of a, a beautiful Sunday morning. Um, first of all, I want to thank um, everybody that helped out for our first farmer's market. Could not have even gotten it out there without Tommy and Debbie who showed up and uh, helped me get everything out there and figured out what we needed to do. It was a great turnout. Uh, there are rumors the honey will be available next time and more vegetables than we have this time as we start to ripen. Um, I want to thank also Dan and Mary who stayed with us the whole time. We had lots of church members that we saw that came through, and um, I think we all partook in the, the lady who made the homemade bread right next to our booth, which is a very dangerous thing, but um, <laughs> it, was, it was really fun. Uh, the next group on June 27th, Marsha and Susan Hancock are going to um, recruit choir members just from what I understand. So we're set for the next one. We need a group to kind of step up for July 11th. Um, I will actually be gone the entire month of July, um, but I do have the, the last Thursday in July to spend college as well. That's with the ESN group. Um, so if you are interested um, and you would like to do that, I do have a couple of ideas. If you just want to help out and you're not sure what to do and you don't represent this particular group, uh, we can make it work for you. Um, tomorrow night uh, is a vestry meeting at 6.30. Um, to my understanding, it's going to be down in the end of the um, That if everything goes according to plan, Debbie will let us know at the last minute if she has to zoom in or if something changes, but hopefully she'll be ready to go. That's the current plan. Live streaming in Gleason Hall on um, Tuesday, it looks like. And then, of course, the convention is coming up. Mary is our expert on this, so if you Yes. Just this is an experience that you won't have again. Uh, general convention is an experience in itself. I wouldn't miss it. It's here in Louisville. You don't have to travel. Try to try to find a time that you can go down. Saturday night will be Bishop Curry's last revival. Uh, it's at the Young Center again. You don't want to miss it. Uh, go to the um, Episcopal um, website because they do ask you to register just because for security reasons and to get the numbers if you plan to go to any of the worship services or revival, just fill out a form and say I'm coming. There's no cost, you don't need a ticket, they just need to know you're coming. So um, please take advantage of this opportunity. The exhibit hall by itself is, is worth going to. So. All right. Um, June 30th is coming up, uh, Baptism Day for Amora and Miller. They were actually out at the uh, farmer's market the other night, and they are being big in a hurry. Um, we were supposed to have sewing this Tuesday, but um, Bobby is going to be out of town, so we're doing sewing the following Tuesday on the 25th. So if you would like to join us doing that, we are out of sewing blankets um, from the basket. Debbie brought some more in from the office, but that is it. We have no more. Uh, to add that. So we're going to be busy and uh, we'll try to fulfill our supply back up. It's been very popular. Um, coffee hour today. Um, Laura is taking 
care of that for? Are you going to see the Okay. Okay. So please join us over there if you'd like to do that. We'll be having a summer um, uh, reading session for the Joining us on Monday morning, at 10 o'clock, on at uh, Panera Bread on Garden Town Road. We'll be reading a book called Into the Mess uh, and Other Jesus Stories by Debbie Thomas. Debbie is a uh, an Episcopal uh, member. I forgot where she was at last year, so I'm not not sure, but uh, but a, a pretty well known name uh, in the Episcopal Church. So it ought to be fun. It relatively light reading, but uh, we'll have some good discussion. So it's open to anyone. Monday morning, 10 o'clock, starting July the 8th. Okay. And of course, we'll be talking about it more, but uh, the invitation is happening. I'm sorry. You said Brown Road. I meant Brown Road. Yes, right, right here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Bishop White will be coming. Uh, we are still looking for a fundraising team. Um, we have had two or three people that have volunteered that would like to be part of it. This is a group that's going to help us come up with creative uh, ideas. It may oops, sorry, involve um, helping uh, the finance committee um, in terms of uh, more um, capital type fundraising, but right now we're thinking also along the lines of raising funds to try to make up that shortfall in our general fund that we will definitely we don't want to get behind it. We don't want to find ourselves in a, a real spot next year. So if you have some creative ideas, you can think outside of the box. We welcome you if you'd like to do that. Are there any other announcements? Mm -hmm. we to touch on going on? And then how long will we be expecting food baskets and like for Red Cross? Uh, I'll try to go. I usually have to call them. forgot it today or if you would like to um, write a check to the Red Cross, um, they can buy more food and we can bring in. So we welcome that and we do get it here by Wednesday at the mental hall evening as well. Our closing hymn is number 598. <laughs>
Thanks be to God. Amen.